Welcome to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, and thank you for being a part of our television ministry. Pulaski Heights is a place of warmth and love, with an outreach mission that extends far beyond our church walls. We have a long tradition of offering our hearts, stretching our minds, and extending Christ's hands to those in need. We are a congregation of hope and an open place of worship that seeks to share the good news beyond the conventional barriers of fellowship. Hi, I'm Brent Scott, a senior pastor at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. It is our desire that you will be inspired by today's message of hope for a diverse community in search of God's love. Today we begin a new sermon series entitled, Who Are You?, which is done in conjunction with our, our 2014 uh, budget stewardship emphasis. We're going through four weeks. Some of you think, are thinking, we, did we just do that? That was a capital improvement campaign last fall, and so it's very important that we fund the ministries, the thousands of ministries of this church. So please prayerfully consider your giving. You will be receiving information next week in the mail regarding this particular emphasis. And then also, the Red Cross blood drive is going on even now in the Great Hall. Uh, quotas are extremely low right now because of the winter weather. There is a desperate need. So if you uh, would consider giving blood following this service, simply go down to the Great Hall and uh, donate. They will be there till 1 p.m. today. And then finally, you'll notice that Financial, Financial Peace University is beginning in February. That information is on your Connect card as well. I encourage you uh, to sign up and be a part of this outstanding opportunity. Once again, welcome to all of you, and let us pause for prayer. Holy One, we gather in this place at the beginning of this year on this day of baptism celebration. May we live out our baptism, serving you faithfully in all that we do. Amen.
God who has spoken to us through a baby born in Bethlehem, we pray this morning for the children of the world and their future. We praise you for teachers, coaches, doctors, and nurses who devote themselves to train their minds and bodies. Help us to be sensitive to the feelings of children, their longings and desires. Oh God, help us to have the sensitivity of a child and accept your love and grace. And now we commit to you, all people in this place, that their lives may be shaped in a Christ-like atmosphere, and that together we may worship you in the beauty of holiness. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. Hey everybody, my name is Cindy Burns. I've got the best job in the world because I get to work with all these wonderful families and babies up here. Today is such an exciting day. Today is Baby Celebration Sunday. This is a new tradition in our church family. We have invited every baby in our church family born in 2013 to come to one of the nine o'clock services. And we just want to celebrate and honor these precious babies, their families. If we have anyone visiting today who has a baby born in 2013, come on down, come on up. We love you. We might not know you, but we love you. And we want you to be part of our community of faith. Y'all looking up here, aren't your hearts just overwhelmed with joy? We are part of a church family that has had 49 babies born this year. These are precious babies, y'all. These are babies that we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, have said, we're going to love you all, we're going to pray for you, and we care passionately about you. Now, this is the tricky part. We want everybody to introduce themselves. So we're going to start down here and just shout it out as loud as you can because we're a church family and we want to hear your name. Just say your name and your baby's name. And then we've got a special litany we're going to do. Sorry about the handheld mic. Anything technical I can break, so call me if you ever need that. Clark and Megan, and this is Clark as well. Oh, 
Dukes. Uh, my name is Steven. My wife Sarah. This is Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> We're the Lots. I'm Harry. This is Haley. I'm Holden. We're the uh, Gunters. My wife Kelly. I'm John. And this is Kathleen Briggs. Cross and Allie Nolan. And this is Willis Lake. Good morning, We give thanks for all of these babies and their families, and I invite you to join with me in the celebration litany. A child is a wonderful and precious gift. Our loving God has placed this gift in your capable hands. God is with us, and we are blessed. Children give us all so much simply by being themselves. They re help it remind us of what matters most in life, grace, hope, and love. God is with us, and we are blessed. As we know so well, this gift comes with tremendous responsibility. But you do not bear this task alone. You worship a loving God and have a supported church family from baptism to third grade Bibles, confirmation to graduation. God is with us and we are blessed. We are your church family. We are supporting you. We are proud of you and we love you. God is with us and we are blessed. Let us pray. God, we give thanks for the gift of life, new life, and the vibrancy it brings to your community of faith. We thank you for these families and so many others that aren't here with us today. Bless all of us as we continue to raise up our children in the way that you call them to go. In your name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Reverend Scarter and members of Plaska Heights United Methodist Church, I present Caroline Clark Dye and Kathleen Grace Gunter for the sacrament of baptism. Candice and Daniel and Kelly and John, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say, I do. I do. do you accept the freedom God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please say, I do. I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church? which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, please say, I do. Will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by their teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, please say, I will. Members of Plasky Heights United Methodist Church, will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? If so, please say, we will. Okay. Caroline and Katie Grace, we're going to take a walk this morning because we want you to meet your new family. Actually, it's a very old family. It's been around a long time. It's called the Body of Christ. And these are your sisters and your brothers in the faith. And they're here today to celebrate your baptisms with you. Uh, aren't they beautiful? They're both just gorgeous, gorgeous girls. Yeah. And you're going to love this congregation. 
They've already prayed for you. They are promising to help bring you up in the faith, to remind you of your baptism, to help you remember it every year, just like we're doing today. And then one day, you'll claim that faith for yourself, and you will be confirmed, make your profession of faith into the body of Christ. You are wonderful. Both of you are just wonderful. And we're proud of you. Let's let everyone see you once more. Yeah. We got, yeah. There we go. <laughs> There you go. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift of water and on these children who receive it. Wash away their sin and clothe them in your righteousness. Amen. Oh, Try again. Try she again. wants me. Yeah. yeah no She's going. <laughs> She's going. Huh? Take her for a drive. <laughs> the older I get, the more I look like one of them. <laughs> you ready? Okay. Caroline Clark, I baptize you in the name of the Father <laughs> and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Caroline, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Thanks. She is. But you're so quiet. <laughs> you ready, Kathleen? You ready for this? Okay. Kathleen Grace, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kathleen, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Of Plaska Heights United Methodist Church, let us welcome the newly baptized as printed in your bulletin. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you into Christ's holy church, for we are all one in Christ Jesus our Lord. We promise to love, encourage, nurture, and support you, and to help you know and follow Christ. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have given us the greatest gift of a new baby born in Bethlehem to show the world, to show us the depth of your love. As a new year begins and as we honor the new babies in our church family, we promise to follow more faithfully in the footsteps of your Son. Strengthen us, O oh God, so that in all that we do, we put the welfare of our children, of all children, above our selfish endeavors. Let us make schools and parks and playgrounds a priority over missiles and aircraft carriers. Make our hearts wrench for children in poverty so that we are moved to help, so that we are moved to create systems that uplift the poor and create opportunity so that they may find dignity and self-worth. May we as aunts and uncles and grandparents and friends stand with our beloved children and surround them with the love and the grace that comes from you. Lord, this morning as we stand at the shore of the Jordan River, hoping to be refreshed, 
Let the waters restore us and wash away anything in our lives, thoughts, or actions that separate us from you. Help us feel the joy of being your beloved children. Lord, as a church family this morning, we extend our Christian sympathy to Mary Catherine McBee and family in the death of her husband, Tom McBee, and to Mike Bracey and family in the death of his mother, Janie Bracey. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who have been hospitalized, Bobby Joe Baker, Eloise Bethay, Beverly Cross, Donald DeLuca, Betty Glasscock, Jill Jennings, Rachel Knox, Wayne Lindsay, Jim McCleary, Jean Parker, Ethel Roshai, Jane Rogers, Brandy Rushton, Terry Sanders, and Betty Stuckey. And we rejoice, O oh Lord, in the birth of Mary Margaret Knox, child of Rachel and Chris Knox, and in the birth of Ella Claire Jennings, child of Jill and John Jennings, grandchild of Cecile and Larry Kimmer. We also rejoice this morning in the baptism of Finley Grace Lynn, child of Jacob and Mindy Lynn. Lord, we offer these prayers this morning in the name of your Holy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You're invited to stand for the reading of the gospel, which is Matthew 3, 13 through 17 in the New Testament. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. What hobby involves history, travel, photography, science, suspense, and detective work, all rolled into one. Genealogy. Genealogy, of course, it is America's fastest growing pastime. More and more people are searching for their family roots by climbing the proverbial family tree to see what they find. Was I descended from Emperor Charlemagne or Attila the Hun? As is, does my family hail from royal lineage or are they just a royal pain in the rear? Genealogy is hot. It is all the rage. It's growing daily. And what's behind it? What, what is the impetus for this interest in genealogy today? Well, part of it, a big part of it is technology. The ability to uh, access billions of pieces of data via the touch of an iPad screen. 
Every week, every week, I receive yet another email solicitation from Ancestry.com inviting me to test run their product. Technology has made a huge difference, but, but the interest in genealogy is not all based on technology. I mean, quite frankly, we live in a culture where our roots are growing increasingly shallow. We live in a world where more often than not, employers relocate their employees every year, where family systems and, and, and units are, are breaking down at mock speed, where stability is in short supply. And so we want to know who we are. We want to know from whence we come. We want to know that we belong, that we are loved, that we are beloved by, by someone. At this point in my life, I have not been bitten by the genealogy bug. I haven't joined Ancestry.com for primarily for two reasons. First of all, genealogy has just always been a part of my life. I mean, I, I sleep in a bed that once bedded four previous generations of my family. I can't remember a time when family photographs and letters and diaries and artifacts and furniture and, and colorful stories were not a part of my family. It's just who I am. But I think even more importantly is that during the course of my life, I have discovered a different kind of genealogy, a spiritual genealogy. Forget Emperor Charlemagne. I am an heir to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jesus the Christ. This is who I am. This is my family tree. This is, this is where I belong. This is what drives me and gives me focus in my life. From the moment... From the moment I finally fully embraced Jesus the Christ, when I realized, like Methodist founder John Wesley, that Christ died for me. Christ died for my sins. Ever since that time, I know who I am, and I know whose I am. And I know I have the best resource possible in, in the best genealogy book ever written, this book, the, the Bible. It's, it's all in here, between these covers, between the Old and New Testaments. Listen, an account of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. That's the way the gospel writer Matthew says it. Chapter 1, verse 1. And it's from this same gospel that we take our text that we have before us today. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. One year ago today, one year ago this very day, I found myself with Reverend J. Clark and 24 other pilgrims bouncing along a gravel road in a charter bus headed down to the Jordan River. It was my first ever trip to the Holy Land. And truly, it was like coming home again to a, to a place I'd never been. My ancestral, my spiritual home, there was a, a familiarity about it. But, but as our breasts drew closer and closer to the Jordan River, we were, we were stunned. There were people, Christians everywhere, Protestants, Roman Catholics, Orthodox perhaps even Coptic Christians, Christians from at least 12 different nations. They were everywhere. They had come by bus. They'd come by car. They had come on foot. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands. And we were stunned. What is this? We cried out. We can't believe there are this many people here. Even our, even our bus driver, our seasoned bus driver and our seasoned tour guide were, were stunned. And then it dawned on us. This is the first Sunday after the Epiphany. This is the celebration of the baptism of the Lord. This is the day when billions of Christians around the world observe and commemorate and celebrate the baptism of Jesus at the Jordan River. And many of them were here today. 
we quickly realized that we were not going to be able to get within spitting distance of the Jordan River because of the crowds. And so we turned around and we agreed that we would come back several days later. And we did. Early one frigid morning, feeling about like it does here in central Arkansas today, we bounced back down that gravel road. And, and our little group from Pulaski Heights stood huddled on the banks of the Jordan River with our coats wrapped around us, the wind whipping against our faces. We, we sang a hymn and, and we, we renewed our baptismal vows by having the sign of water placed on our foreheads and, and hearing the words, remember your baptism and be thankful. But there, are two, there were two members of our group who were not content with that kind of renewal. They wanted more. Katie Dunn, a lifelong member of this church who is now studying theology to be an ordained pastor at Garrett Seminary in Chicago, and, and Chris Flanagan, whose father is a member of this church, Pat Flanagan. Chris is an attorney in Eureka Springs. Katie and Chris wanted more. They wanted to be immersed. They wanted to remember their baptism by being immersed in the waters of the Jordan. And so the three of us put on our little flimsy baptismal gowns with swimsuits beneath. And barefoot, we, we tread lightly into the very frigid and swollen waters of the Jordan River. It was at a record high. The current was swift. There was debris everywhere. I wouldn't have been surprised if a goat carcass had floated past. It was horrible. It took our breath away. We turned blue. But I sweep some of the debris aside and I plunged first Chris and then Katie beneath the waters. And I said, remember your baptism and be thankful. Though my teeth were chattering so much, it was difficult to decipher what I was saying. And in that moment, in that river, in that frigid water, I said to myself, this is insane. This is horrific. John the baptizer would never have done this. Jesus would never have submitted to this. But they did. They did. Right in this very spot. In this place. In the swollen waters of the Jordan River. It was not pretty. It was not tame. It was muddy and messy and cold and painful. So forget. Forget about all those beautiful pastoral images of Jesus being baptized at the Jordan River by, by artists like Bellini and Da Vinci and El Greco. Forget about our pretty, well-appointed Methodist baptismal fonts. Forget about those heated fiberglass baptistries that our Baptist sisters and brothers are so proud of. Forget all of it. This is something powerful this is sacrament this is a holy moment this is life-changing this is downright dangerous it makes you want to cry i'm reminded of the words of the preacher to the boy in flannery o'connor's classic short story the river have you ever been baptized the preacher asked what's that the boy murmured if I baptize you, the preacher said, you'll be able to go to the kingdom of Christ. You'll be washed in the river of the suffering son. You'll go by the deep river of life. Do you want that? Yes, the child said. You won't be the same again, the preacher said. You'll count. And without more warning, he tightened his hold and swung him upside down and plunged his hand into the water. He held him under while he said the words of baptism. Then he jerked him up again and looked sternly at the gasping child. You count now, the preacher said. You didn't even count before. John the baptizer came to the Jordan River preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And so we need it still today. We are contaminated. You and I, we are contaminated with hate and envy and greed and lust and pettiness and stinginess and rudeness and on and on and on. We, we are sinful. We are broken. We all stand in need of the cleansing waters of baptism. Every one of us, that is, except for Jesus. Jesus is the only person 
who ever lived who did not need baptism because Jesus is pure, unadulterated love. Pure, unadulterated love. So why did Jesus do this? Why did Jesus submit to entering into the swollen, muddy waters of, of the Jordan River? I mean, the baptism of Jesus is recounted in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But only Matthew, only Matthew's account attempts to offer an explanation to, ful to fulfill, to fulfill all, to fulfill all. That's the way Jesus explained it to John when he protested and said, I should be baptized by you. I should be baptized by you. To fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness. That's what Jesus replied. That's why he said he was being baptized. Through Jesus' lowly birth in a manger in Bethlehem as a fragile human being, in his baptism in the swollen, muddy waters of the Jordan River, and in his agonizingly painful human death on the cross, Jesus fully identified with us. He fully identified with us. He said, you are not alone. I am with you. I love you. You are my beloved daughter. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. In his baptism, Jesus... Jesus' gift of grace was poured out on all humanity. An unconditional love was given to us. And excuse me for saying so, but it seems to me that the church of Jesus Christ today could do with a heavy dose of that unconditional love. Because quite frankly, more often than not, we are known more for who we hate and who we reject than who we love. Than who we love. And it's not until we love and accept everyone, and I mean everyone, that we will fully be living out our baptismal vows. And we will become the church that Jesus has called us to be. I still haven't joined Ancestry.com. I still don't do genealogy work, but this past week, this past week, I did, I did submit to doing a little spiritual genealogy work. On a whim, I googled the name of the pastor who officiated my baptism almost six decades ago when I was a month and a half old. I had his name. It was signed on my baptism certificate, though it's grown somewhat faded and yellowed and a, a bit difficult to read. I, I found his name, and all I ever really knew about my baptism was that my mom told me that the pastor who officiated my baptism at First Methodist Church shortly left the church thereafter and, and became a Lutheran pastor instead. And, and though my mother didn't intend it and, and would be horrified to know, I, I think I always carried some guilt that for some reason he left the Methodist church because he baptized me. But I found his name online. I did. I, I found his name online. And sure enough, he left the Methodist church in the mid-1950s and, and he left Arkansas, his native Arkansas, and he moved to Texas and he became a Lutheran pastor and he served the church for the Lutheran church for more than 30 years and in his retirement he served as a librarian for 22 years. And he had a wife and he had a daughter named Maria. And sure enough, sure enough and sadly enough, I read he had died. He just died four months ago at the ripe old age of 96. I read his online obituary and then I went to the online condolences section to see the kind of memorials that people had honored in his memory. There were none. There were none. And so I wrote one four months late. I thanked him for his faithfulness. I thanked him for his service to the church. 
And I expect, express appreciation to him that he at least got one United Methodist pastor started out on the right journey so many decades ago. I'll let him know that he was one of God's beloved. Amen. And so as she's come forward to receive our offering, I would like to remind all of our members and guests to please complete your Connect card. It lets us know that you're here today. And also on the back of your bulletin, there are two very important announcements. We have a Red Cross blood drive going on until 1 o'clock today in the Great Hall. We hope that you will give the gift of life. And also note the Financial Peace course is coming up, a nine-week course that deals with all uh, family financial matters. Let us pray. Our gifts appear so small, O God, before one who has given us so much. But like children's gifts to their parents, let them be presented with all our hearts and enthusiasm, and thus be found pleasing in your sight as we present our tithes and our offerings through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he arose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift of water and those who renew our baptismal vows through it. Transform us in your image day by day. Amen. This morning, you are invited to receive the gift of the sign of water as a reminder of your baptism, your introduction into the faith. This is an ancient tradition of this church. Uh, the choir will come first, and then the ushers will lead the congregation down. We invite you to come forward to receive a shell as a reminder, a symbol of your baptism, to receive the sign of, of water on your forehead and then to return to your places of worship. If you have not been baptized, we invite you to come forward and receive a, a blessing by crossing your arms like this. Perhaps you would want to speak to one of our pastors following the service about this, this sacrament. It's opened, you're invited. I invite the choir, the choir to come first.
thank you for joining us today at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. And I hope you enjoyed our worship service.